Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another one of my weekly updates on my box truck business, on bookkeeping, on accounting, on QuickBooks. I talk about everything there is to know about box truck business, whether it's how to start one, how to factor a load, how to categorize your transactions, how to read a rate con, how to check a BOL. I try to cover it all and I try to do it from an authentic, honest and genuine perspective. So my name is Zach Pascarello and I own one box truck business, one box truck um, and one box truck business, I suppose. Uh, but I do not drive. So I'm just an owner. I'm not a traditional owner operator. So I tried to give my unique perspective of trying to run this business kind of hands off from the top. And today I want to talk about best tax tips for owner operators. Um, specifically people who are either a 1099 contractor or just a single member LLC owner operator. I'm going to talk about how much money you should be saving for taxes. I'm going to talk about what your pay looks like, um, in terms of your profit or loss and your balance sheet. And then I'm going to go over a couple slides showing you, um, all the expenses and deductions that you should be looking for to reduce your net income. Um, so if you don't know this already, as a single member LLC, you're going to be filing what's called a Schedule C with your tax return. So that Schedule C is basically just a profit and loss. And on that profit and loss, you're going to be capturing all of your cost of goods sold. So whether that's fuel, um, you're going to be capturing your repairs and maintenance on your truck, depreciation on your truck, your, your pallet jacks, the job supplies, and a lot of other things. So I'm going to be talking about all those various business deductions that you can expect to take. Um, so let's get started. I've got a little slideshow with some notes to kind of help you guys along here. So we'll look at the first one here. So for your taxes, it's not, we've got three or four different types of tax that you can expect as a self-employed business owner. So first of all, federal income tax, everyone knows about federal income tax. It's a progressive, system so the more money you make the more tax you pay and i've got a chart that i'll show you guys in the next slide but before we get to federal income tax i'm going to talk about self-employed tax so if you in the past have worked for an employer this will show up as maybe fica or social security or medicare and it's typically right around 7.5 like 7.65 percent of your your w-2 wages that's what comes out for FICA, Social Security, Medicare, but as, as a self-employed person, you are responsible for what your employer was also paying. So your employer was paying half of this tax for you. So now that you are employer and employee, you are one and the same, you are now responsible for 15.3% of this SE self-employment tax. So right off the bat, expect to save 15% of your net income just for self-employment tax state tax can vary wildly so i just have a a range there zero to 13 percent as you know it depends on what state you live in texas florida no state tax i think pennsylvania is right around three percent and then california is all the way up to 13 percent yeah so state tax can can vary pretty significantly but um you know, just do a quick Google search. Hey, what's the state income tax rate for Pennsylvania? And you'll get a pretty clear answer, um, depending on what state you live in. And then lastly, local tax, not very significant, but I wanted to throw it in there just so you're made aware, um, county, school district, township, all those things play into consideration for your local tax. It's usually a pretty small number, less than 3%. Um, so federal income tax, let me show you this little chart. And I love this chart because it shows it's, it's a little complicated, but bear with me. We've got the tax rate on the far left hand side, all the way from 10% up to 37%. And then we, in the middle here, we have the taxable income bracket. That's how much money you are making. And if you fall within that bracket, then the tax rate on the left hand side applies to you. And then if we look all the way on the right hand side, it actually breaks it down for you. So you can see in the first column, it just 10% of however much money you make less than $19,000 pretty straightforward. But then as soon as you make more than $20,000, it gets a little more complicated. But I like the way this chart breaks it down for you because it actually shows you the previous amount from the lower tax bracket. So $1,990 because we're right now. So right now we're making more than $20,000. So 
we are taxed on our first 20,000 at a rate of 10%. And then anything more than that $19,900 is taxed at 12%. So we would take, you know, your net income with, let's say it's $50,000, you would subtract from $50,000, $19,900, and then you get $30,100, multiply that by 0.12, multiply that by 12%. So multiply that 30,000 by 12%, and then whatever that number is, you add 1,990, and then you get your federal income tax liability. So most people are going to be probably around the 20% range. So it's not just, it's not just not. So if you make a hundred thousand dollars, not all of your hundred thousand dollars is taxed at 20%. Like the first 20,000 is taxed at 10%. And then the next 60,000 is taxed at 12%. And then the last 40% is taxed at 22%. So it's a little complicated. It's not just a flat tax rate. It is progressive. So the more money you make, the more tax you pay. But you can expect to pay close to 16, 18, 20% of your total net income in federal income tax. So with all that being said, um, let's just say 20% for federal income tax, 15% for self-employment tax, 5% for state tax, Right now we're sitting right around 40% of your net income for taxes. And that, so this is very dependent, obviously, on, a, on many, many factors, whether you're married, filing jointly, whether you're single, married, filing separately, whether you have dependents, whether you're paying mortgage interest, whether you have medical expenses, there's hundreds of different deductions and credits and different exceptions and rules that will apply to your specific tax scenario. But just kind of generally speaking, you can expect to pay right around 20% federal income tax, 15% self-employment tax, and you know 5% state tax. So that's 40%. More than likely, you're gonna have some deductions, you're gonna have some more expenses, you're gonna have some credits that are gonna reduce your tax liability. So I always recommend for owner operators and just single member LLC business owners to save anywhere from 20 to 30% of their net income for taxes at the end of the year. So that's just a general rule of thumb. It's not a perfect science, um, but it'll help you at least be prepared for taxes. So save 20 to 30% of your net income for taxes. And that'll, that should cover federal self-employment, state, local, as long as you're saving somewhere around 20 to 30 percent and then whenever i'm saying net income that is all of your revenue that's all of that's the the top line income minus all of your expenses and i'm going to talk about all of your expenses here in a couple of minutes um, and then just to dive a little deeper into net income and what does that really look like this is a very general profit and loss. So I, I had someone on Facebook ask me, um, like, wh like, how do I, how do I account for my pay? Like, what, where is, where does my salary fall into my profit and loss and my balance sheet? Like, is that a tax deduction? Is that a business expense? Am I supposed to pay taxes on that? They were a little unsure as to how owners pay, owner's salary works. Understandably so, because it is, it is pretty complicated. And this is for a single member LLC, not an S corporation. So if you elect to be taxed as an S corporation, this is completely different. So this is only applicable to um, a single member LLC, not an S corporation. So just keep that in mind. And the reason why it's different is because you are not paying yourself a salary. So there's no corporation that will be taxed separately. Whatever income at the end of the year your business makes, that's the same income that you make. You and the business are one and the same. So this profit and loss here, total income, total cost of goods sold, typically fuel or you know direct labor, direct material. So if, you, if you're hiring a driver, whatever you pay your driver would be considered direct labor. That would be cost of goods sold. And then subtract from that total expenses and then we get net income. So this is this profit and loss statement here, and bear with me, I'm gonna to try to explain very quickly a profit and loss statement and a balance sheet. Um, profit and loss statement only accounts for income and expenses. 
So we're only looking at total income minus expenses. So this net income is essentially what you will be taxed on at the end of the year. So that's why it's very important to maintain your QuickBooks and to check your profit and loss statement on a monthly basis. That way you can know exactly how much money you should be saving for taxes. Cause you're going to take your profit and loss statement. You're going to take all this data and you're just going to transfer it directly to your schedule C. And that's how you determine your tax liability. So you're going to take your net income and that's what you're going to be saving 20 to 30% on. Now I'm going to show you your balance sheet. Balance sheet's a little bit more complicated because we're talking about assets, liabilities, and equity. But bear with me here. I'm going to quickly explain your balance sheet. So whatever you pay yourself as an owner operator, that's not a business expense. That's not a tax deduction. That's just flowing through your profit and loss statement. So COGS expenses right here, you know, if you pay yourself $10,000 a month or, you know, $5,000 a month, that is not showing up on your profit and loss statement. That's going to be an equity transaction. That's going to be owner's pay. Now bear with you. I'm going to show you your balance sheet. This is your balance sheet. We've got assets, we've got liabilities, and we've got equity. So we take our net income and you can see it right there on the balance sheet. This is at the end of the year. This is for 12 full months. We've got net income right there, three rows up from the bottom, $85,000. But we've already paid ourselves $50,000. So we've taken out of our business $50,000 and transferred it to our personal checking account. Simple as that. It's just an owner's draw, owner's pay, personal expenses. $50,000. So we take 85 minus 50. Now we're at 35,000. But you can see there right above owner's pay, I've got owner's investment. So that was your own personal money that you put into your business to get started in the very beginning. So now we add $10,000. So now we've got $45,000 of equity in our business. We take net income minus our owner's pay, and then we add back in owner's investment and we get $45,000. Now, quick crash course in accounting, assets equal liabilities plus equity. So we also need to look at our liabilities and the liability can be a truck loan. Liability could be um, salaries payable. If you're paying your drivers and you haven't, you know, they've worked for you, but you haven't paid them yet. Um, payroll tax liability, but most commonly you're going to be looking at a truck loan and a credit card. So this credit card here, $5,000 outstanding balance on our credit card at the end of the year. So we've got $5,000 in liabilities. We've got $45,000 in equity. So we've got $50,000 total in liabilities and equity on our balance sheet. And because I said assets equal liabilities plus equity, we've also got $50,000 of cash in our bank account. And the reason, so this is also going to get into the statement of cash flows and I, it's, it's kind of complicated. It's pretty, um, it's pretty hard to understand just from looking at this balance sheet, but let me explain to you real quick statement of cash flows and balance sheet and how we got to that $50,000 cash. So we took our net income. So we received $85,000 after we took out expenses, but then we took out $50,000 to pay ourselves. So now we're at 35,000 and owner's investment. Like I said, that's $10,000. So we're at $45,000, but the confusing part is how do we account for liabilities in our statement of cash flows in our balance sheet? Liabilities typically don't involve cash. So if we have $5,000 of outstanding liabilities, that means we have already used our credit card to pay for $5,000 worth of stuff, but we didn't use cash to pay for it. We didn't use cash to pay for it. So we have to add that back into our equity to get our assets and our cash. That's kind of the, the bot, the basic premise of statement of cash flow. So you add back in liabilities because it wasn't a true cash transaction. There was no cash that was involved in, in accumulating that $5,000 credit card liability. So if you're, if you're super lost, don't worry about it. I probably didn't do the best job of explaining that, but this is just, a real quick down and dirty overview of what a balance sheet would look like. And I, and I wanted to talk about this primarily because I had people asking me, Hey, how do I account for my salary? How do I account for owner's pay? Like, what does that look like? Is that a business expense? And no, it is not a business expense. It's an equity transaction. That's, that's, a, that's all I'll say about that. Okay. So now I want to get into business expenses, business deductions, and, um, 
who it applies to, what it means, how to account for it. So owner operator taxes and expenses. So if you are a W2 company driver, I apologize, but this is not for you. You are not able to file a schedule C if you are only a W2. You are not able to capture business expenses if you don't own a business or if you did not receive a 1099. So W2 company drivers, I'm sorry, but this does not apply to you. 1099 independent contractor, this applies to you. Owner operator, this applies to you. What is a business expense? Business expense is anything that is necessary and ordinary to your business. This is the very loose, very gray definition by the IRS to explain a business expense. And the reason it's so vague is because there are so many different types of businesses and there are even more types of business expenses. So just ask yourself that simple question. Is it necessary and ordinary in my business? Now we will look at some different types of specific business expenses that you should be accounting for, that you should be writing off because they are perfectly legitimate business expenses for your box truck business. Cell phone. So if you, if you have one cell phone and you use it to call your family and friends and you also use it to talk to your dispatcher, then you will have to figure out a percentage. I use this phone for 40% business, 60% personal. So I'm going to take my cell phone bill and I will multiply it by 40% and that will be my business expense of my cell phone. But if you have a separate cell phone that you only use for business, maybe GPS, talk to the broker, talk to the dispatcher, um, talk to your factoring company. If that's the only cell phone you use, then that's hundred percent of business expense computer. If you're using it to do QuickBooks, if you're using your computer for Microsoft Excel, if you're using your computer to research the DAT load board, check rate cons, upload your BOLs, that computer business expense. If you're using that computer to play video games while you're sitting in your hotel, not a business expense. Clothing. So if you have gym shorts and a t-shirt that you're wearing on a daily basis, that's not a business expense. But if you have a t-shirt with your business logo on it, that's a business expense. If you have special, um, like a special uniform, that's a business expense. Um, I have their PPE, personal protective equipment. If you have gloves, if you have special socks, special knee pads, um, whatever, special hat that you wear, then that would be considered a business expense if it is necessary and ordinary for your business. Education, if you're training to get your CDL, um, if you bought a book on QuickBooks, or this is a perfect opportunity to talk about this. If you buy my course in the description below, it teaches you everything you need to know about QuickBooks from start to finish as an owner operator. It's only $59 and it will save you hours and hours of time. That would be a business expense. All right, moving on. Um, tools and equipment, pallet jack, ratchet straps, first aid kit. I think this is all pretty straightforward. Um, pallet jack, I mean, everyone pretty much needs a pallet jack, ratchet straps, you're gonna need ratchet straps, first aid kit, fire extinguisher, flares, anything inside of your truck that you're gonna be using for your business, that's just a business expense. I'm not gonna say anything more about that. I think that's pretty straightforward. Hotels, if you're over the road, staying in hotels, medical exams, your annual DOT physical, absolutely business expense. But if you break your toe playing football and you go to the urgent care, that medical checkup, unfortunately, is not a business expense. Um, but your, your annual DOT physical, absolutely. Um, software like DAT, load board and QuickBooks. That's all that monthly subscription, 100% business expense office supplies. So anything and everything you're using for your business, paper and pens. If you get a notebook from Walmart, if you get a pack of 20 pens because you're constantly signing BOLs, business expense. If you go to the truck stop to print your BOL or your Raycon, business expense. If you have to fax something to your dispatcher or the broker, business expense. If you have to buy separate folders to keep track of all your paperwork, business expense, anything you're using in your business to keep track of things. Even if you are 
taking a CDL course, you're taking classes to get your CDL, and you have to buy folders and notebooks for your CDL class, business expense. Okay, so your truck, just like tools and equipment, this is pretty straightforward in my opinion, but um, you know, tolls, fuel, repairs and maintenance, interest that you pay on your loan, depreciation. I talk about depreciation all the time. If you have any questions about depreciation, contact your accountant or reach out to me. I'd be happy to explain it again. Um, but all these things, 100% business expense. Uh, miscellaneous things that you might not think about. So cooler, if you're packing your lunch, if you're going to the grocery store and getting some lunch meat and some cheese, that cooler that you bought for your truck, business expense. If you pay a subscription for GPS or if you bought a Garmin, um, if you've got a sleeper cab, you've got a bed in it, uh, cleaning supplies. If you buy some Windex to clean your windshield, if you go through a truck wash, business expense. If you're paying your dispatcher on a weekly or monthly basis to help you find loads, that's a business expense. Um, the more you start looking at this, the more you start thinking about you know, necessary, ordinary, what am I really using on a daily basis? I think it becomes a lot more clear and I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised whenever you realize, oh wow, I can actually use these expenses and this money that I'm spending to reduce my tax liability and ultimately save me a lot of money. That's that's the whole point. Um, these are not tax loopholes. These are tax incentives. So the IRS, the government wants you to invest in yourself and your business. So they are encouraging you to educate yourself more. They are encouraging you to buy more equipment, buy more trucks. Um, they're encouraging you to be successful in your business because that's what makes our, our economy run. So these are tax incentives. They want you to reinvest in your business, grow your business and be successful. Okay, I've got a separate slide. I got a couple slides for meals because there are a couple options and it's really, really important. So I, I put this whole sentence here and I'm gonna read it. It's straight from the IRS website. You can deduct the cost of meals if it is necessary for you to stop for substantial sleep or rest to properly perform your duties while traveling away from home on business. That is straight from the IRS website. And what that means that um, if you are required to travel and required to stop and you are unable to eat at home, then that is a business expense because you are traveling away from home. So your home would be, for example, if you lived in Philadelphia, and if you're outside of Philadelphia, then you're traveling away from home. If you live in Cleveland, Ohio, and you're outside of Cleveland and you're traveling, that would be away from home on business and any meals you get would be a business expense. Um, and per DOT regulations, you know, you gotta take a 30 minute break every, every eight hours. So you are required to stop. You are required to stop um, for that 30 minute break, you are required to stop for 10 hours to sleep and rest. So you are required to stop. You are required to eat. Therefore, it is a business expense. And now you've got two options for expensing your travel meals. You can do the actual cost. You can keep track of all your receipts. Every time you go to McDonald's and buy a McDouble and a McChicken, you can keep track of that. Or truckers actually get a special per diem. So your per diem changes depending on the city that you're in but because truckers are traveling across the country through multiple cities every single day we get a flat rate per diem and it's actually a little bit above what most cities are charging so we get a little a little bump in our per diem and it makes it easy for truckers to keep track of their travel meal expense and it's 66 dollars a day so if you go to mcdonald's and if you buy five mcdoubles and five mcchickens every single day and you're only spending 10 or 15 bucks, you can still use this per diem of $66 a day to reduce your tax liability to account for travel meals as long as you're traveling away from home and required to rest. So pretty significant. You could potentially spend 15 bucks a day on food, but takes take a tax expense of $66 a day for the per diem. So that's awesome. That's, uh, that's pretty big. It's going to save you a lot of money. Okay, so that's it. Um, it was not an all-inclusive list. It was a highlight reel of some expenses that I think are relevant and applicable to owner operators. And um, I hope that helps. I hope going into the new year, if you guys did not keep track of your expenses and income properly in 2021, 
it's never too late. I would encourage you to get QuickBooks, um, especially for the new year. Start fresh January 1st, 2022. Do it right. That way you're not stressed out when it comes time to file your taxes because taxes are a pretty significant bill that we have to pay every single year. And you want to make sure you get it right. You want to make sure you take advantage of every expense and every dollar that you spend on your business. So I appreciate you all watching. Um, if you made it this far, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. Um, subscribe to my channel. If you want to see weekly updates, I try to do a new update every single Monday or Tuesday. Um, next week, I'm going to be talking about how to calculate your cost per mile. So if you want to watch that, definitely subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up. If you like the video, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you have any questions you want me to answer in my future videos, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, yeah, thanks for your support. And if you're driving out there, stay safe. It's getting cold. So just be careful. And um, 